Welcome to Navigating the Irish Art Scene, the first talk in the Exchanges series. Exchanges is a programme of talks, workshops and residencies from Sligo County Council Arts Service and funded by the Arts Council's Invitation to Collaboration Scheme. Exchanges focuses on funding and supporting culturally diverse and socially engaged art. The Exchanges programme is presented in partnership with CREATE, Cord Sligo Arts Festival, the Model Sligo and the Hawkswell Theatre. Our talk series is presented in collaboration with CREATE. Today's talk is pre-recorded due to COVID-19 restrictions, but if you have any questions for the artists, you can put them in the text box on the screen. And so I'd like to introduce Hina Khan and Amir Abu Alrub in conversation with Yevgeny Storn about navigating the Irish art scene. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Evgeny Storn. I used to work uh, at CREATE National uh, Development Agency for Collaborative Art as a cultural diversity researcher. And it's my great pleasure to have this conversation today with two people that I uh, managed to work with together and uh, uh, share different events and different, um, uh, different um, uh, meetings that uh, have been organized while uh, while I was working in CREATE. And uh, uh, in another occasion, it's also uh, for me uh, a great, great pleasure to just be able to, to share with you the, the pleasure to learn about the art and about the uh, creativity of these two fantastic individuals that we will now have a conversation. Uh, the meeting, the, the, the event today on Zoom is called, is called Navigating the Irish Art Scene. And we will definitely try to understand how to navigate uh, such an, uh, a complex uh, thing as the art scene and especially uh, the Irish art scene. But uh, to start, I would like to just say that, uh, you know, uh, over just a little bit over a year, somewhere in uh, Wuhan, uh, uh, some invisible, minuscule thing appeared and changed the human history forever. And now, uh, four people sitting in the same small island in the North Atlantic are cannot meet together and conversate. So we had over a 40 minutes of technical issues. So I'm a little bit tired and I, I ask you pardon because my English is getting more and more in existence uh, uh, in the direct proportion of how tired I am. But uh, nonetheless, I hope we will manage and we will have an interesting conversation. And uh, I mentioned Wuhan also for a reason, I think that the, the very fact that something that started so far away from Ireland, that, but that affected every single corner of the planet uh, speaks by itself. We are living in a global world. We are living in the epoch when there no one is, uh, can, can put a border and protect uh, themselves from from the rest of humanity. We are living together. We are part of the same organism. And with this in mind, the, our conversation about cultural diversity in the Irish art scene is uh, gaining completely different uh, dimension. And this is something I would really like to uh, you bear in mind while watching and uh, navigating with us through uh, certain questions and not all of them may be easy. Uh, so my great pleasure is to introduce you my, uh, my good friend and uh, uh, really a person that I am so happy to, you know, be in touch with every time I'm in touch, uh, which is Amir Abu al -Rob, who is a Palestinian refugee and a theater maker. And uh, in 2013, they joined the Freedom Theater uh, TFT, uh, uh, Jenin Refugee Camp, uh, Palestine, and completed four years of study in theater and culture, cultural resistance. And in 2017, uh, they worked with uh, uh, the Freedom Theater School as a facilitator. 
They have been a part of LGBT movement in Palestine. In July 2019, uh, they took a course in uh, character and scene study in the Lear in Dublin. They performed and uh, in and co-devised the bet at Cardiff Sligo Arts Festival in 2020. And in October 2020, they were recipient of the AIC Bursary Award for uh, Collaborative Arts and Cultural Diversity. So we will, we will speak uh, with Amir about uh, all uh, the journey to Ireland, but also about the absolutely fascinating uh, experience that they gained while in uh, the renowned uh, Freedom Theater in Palestine. And also it's another great pleasure uh, to introduce you one of the probably most, uh, 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 how to say it, old is a bad word because <laughs> it will lead us to the wrong direction, but uh, uh, to, 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 to the person that I met uh, a while, while ago, when I just arrived to Ireland and uh, we went together through the first uh, summer school on cultural diversity and uh, was bumping into each other here and there for years, uh, which is a fantastic miniaturist artist uh, from uh, uh, Pakistan, uh, Hina Khan. Uh, Hina will introduce herself uh, with much more details and will show her work. But before uh, we will proceed to the self-introductions, uh, I would all only like to ask you one question that I always make to the uh, artists with uh, cultural diverse background or, you know, migrant background, whatever. Do you consider yourself, Amir, an Irish artist? Um, first of all, thank you so much, uh, Afghani, for, uh, Afghani, for the introduction. Um, and yes, I consider myself as an Irish artist uh, because I believe in one thing that if you live uh, between people for 40 days, you become one of them. Um, and the journey as an artist for me in Ireland, it's been fascinating and really interesting. And I always been surrounded with people who felt they are people from home. Um, and yeah, I feel, uh, yes, I'm an Irish artist. That's great. I think Ireland is very privileged to have you as an Irish thank you. artist. Uh, Hina, what about you? Uh, thank you, Henny, for uh, this uh, beautiful introduction. And uh, I, uh, but my perception is I am an artist uh, and I am producing a work. Uh, my roots are from Pakistan. So like I am working here since 2015, but uh, I thinking it's uh, a bit different uh, than Amir. I cannot consider myself an Irish artist, but I'm consider myself an artist. You know, uh, like I, Irish, uh, Irish art scene and Irish people support me in a way like they like my work and they felt like it is the work should be highlighted. But uh, I think I cannot say myself uh, an Irish artist because uh, I am not born here. I feel this difference in between art scene as well. This is very interesting, yeah. Yes, you know, every time we had, a, we had this conversation with different people, with different artists, no matter where are they coming from, this idea of Irishness can be an inclusive tool, but can be also an exclusive and alienating. Do we have to reclaim being Irish because we lived here for more than 40 days? Or do we have to stick to our roots and be proud and be proud of being ourselves and have our heritage, have our culture, our language, everything? Or can we combine it without compromising either of this? This is the, just the questions that we don't have to have any answer right now. But this is something that this recent processes, quite recent processes of the integration of artists from a migrant background, active integration that the Arts Council started uh, not, not very long ago, uh, is they are the questions that we will have to think about in the foreseeable future and testing different scenarios and trying and 
trying to find ourselves and changing because the cultural exchange, the whole process of bringing your arts, uh, it's like a plant that you put in another soil and it can not grow or it can grow differently. It can be bigger or smaller because it's the climate is different. You know, the same uh, trees that are growing in the mid Russia, when you bring them to the north of Russia, they are becoming uh, small. So it's the same tree, but it's smaller. And something like that can happen to another uh, to, to, to the to the arts practice to the art, and 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 and, and things like that. So I think it's kind of, we need to be. We need to be open to the possibility that our art is changing in Ireland, that Ireland is influencing our art as well as we are influencing Irish art scene. And how you both navigated it, we will speak after you present your small introductions uh, about your own art. So I would invite Hina to start with your miniatures, with your visual uh, um, uh, presentation. Uh, thank you, John, for facilitating it. It's uh, the, the the technical issues that I was mentioning. Uh, so we are we have a little bit more complex today constellation. Uh, but uh, thanks to that and thanks to John, you can see Hina's work, and then I will invite Amir uh, to present their work, and then we we, we can uh, come back to our initial conversation. Uh, yes, uh, when you are right, we have uh, the burden in a, like, we are uh, witnessing of two cultures, like one culture where we are brought up and where we get our studies done. And the second culture is the Irish culture where we are rerouting ourselves. So uh, my art is always uh, representing about the social issues about, uh, uh, I am a person who always trying to break the boundaries. So like, uh, here is some samples of my work. So this is the miniature painting I create for women. It's all about the Pakistan. Uh, it's all about the Pakistani women, like how uh, they are divided by the men. It's a patriarchal society, and how uh, like we are treating by the men, uh, socially accepted and non-accepted women, because there is some red light area. My research is about prostitutions. So it's all about how uh, women are divided by the men and how they are treating both in both way, the socially accepted women and non-accepted women, because uh, this is my thesis painting and I have created in uh, when I have done my master's in Pakistan. So there is some samples of miniature painting. Miniature is a very traditional technique and we can learn from its uh, Mughal miniature and uh, it's a foliage from Mughal paintings. And I make these flowers and this is the painting about elevator. It's all about the escape from the like how we can escape from the impurities kind of things. This painting is in a permanent collection of Arts Council Ireland. It's a ruined garden. This is the series about child killing I have created. This is a whole, these are the whole series of paintings. This is the second one. Yeah, this is the acrylic painting uh, while I'm doing my course in NCAD. Uh, it's a visual research course with Felicity Clare. I learn it here. It's a bit uh, like I learned from the Irish art here. The next painting is in the permanent collection of Arts Council Island. Last year, Arts Council Island, uh, it's an honor for me. Like uh, they, buy, uh, they bought my two of my work in their permanent collection. It's a shattered soul. And next, uh, I had a solo show in Balina Art Center, and this is all the work I create. At that time, Syrian war is going on, so it's all about the, uh, these imagery, all I developed uh, about the Garden of Anthropocene and uh, how we are creating that polluted the earth by, uh, the, by uh, themselves. This work I have produced during the residency uh, in collaboration of uh, uh, Create and uh, Fire Station collaboration. And I got this award in 2018. Uh, currently I'm researching on the migration of my grandparents uh, uh, 
it's uh, it is from 1947 till now uh, and uh, like i am now connecting my migration to my grandparents migration so uh, this uh, roots painting i've developed this is again untitled this is uh, this is all the work i have developed in ireland these are the clouds i am fascinated by the irish clouds so i create these clouds i have produced this work during the residency of cowhouse studio in wexford last year yes this is all about uh, the relationship and uh, like uh, as evgeny said about uh, we are all uh, go through with the situation of covid through it start from the wuhan and it took take over all over the world so it changed the perspective of thinking of everybody not even like every single person is thinking about like how we are all in a one thing and how we all affected by one thing and covid beyond the borders it goes everywhere so my research is all about Uh, the next slide joan please thank you yeah this is all uh, this all installation i made it uh, like uh, last year in uh, skibreen it's all about how covid attack us and how it took over all the global like all the countries and all the people are affected by this with, without the boundaries without the classism without the gender issue without the like without the thinking of like the, it's black it's asian it's american it's english english or it's irish it goes everywhere so i i take the different artists views as well about my work and about how we can think about in this difficult time so everybody is thinking in the same way like we are all affected and we are all very painful with this situation because my brother got affected and i'm really touched with that and i was always thinking like my husband will die because he's a heart heart patient so i created this all installation in a skip brain uh, this is the installation i created in tu dublin it's all about the destination unknown and it is again about the suffocation while living in the dpc and how i can like uh, there is a very difficult time period for me because my husband was sick so i created this destination unknown this is my recent work part of asia art and activism and uh, there is a uh, 39 people died in a lorry and uh, like uh, suffocated in a lorry while they are Uh, traveling from korea to england and it's uh, it's a part of asia art activism last year in november and uh, this is a video work this is just a drawing slide you can see and uh, like it's all about migration and uh, and the next slide is blind la while you are in a in some difficult condition and you cannot find the ways every way you can go and every door is closed so this is the blind alley i have created while i was living in dpc so this is the glimpse of uh, just of my work i cannot say like uh, uh, here is irish artist and irish people who told me about different things and i don't know like which is important and which is not important even uh, in during the uh, when i apply for the fire station and create residency i don't know about that and 16 17 artist uh, irish artist i did, uh, i was just played my work in a group shows they send me the links like hina must apply for that this is very good for you and you must go for that so these kind of uh, like help and support i got from the irish artist and uh, the arts council offices they always gave me grants and uh, i go through with the material grants every year so i produce a lot of work during living here thank you, thank you and uh, we will over speak to you. about it we will definitely <laughs> touch upon that thank you very much for your for your introduction and it would be uh, i i am one of the privileged who saw your work not through zoom and i hope a lot more people will be able to see it soon uh, amir i give uh, the stage to you you are so familiar to the stage this is a natural habitat for you so uh, yeah. this is the floor is yours and uh, then we will proceed with the conversation thank you evgeny um 
I can introduce myself first of all about from the Freedom Theater where uh, I started all uh, my artistical journey, um, where I completed four years of culture resistance uh, studies um, and theater studies. Um, and part of my, through this journey, like all the time, the most important thing was, is how to strengthen my voice and how to strengthen um, to empower uh, myself and to empower others in the society to uh, talk about their voices, uh, if they, where they come from, you know, having a different issues in the society. And from there, uh, for uh, many years, eight years, let's say, in Palestine, working as a collaborative artist, and also I worked in hospitals with children who have cancer as a doctor clown uh, with Red Nose International uh, uh, Palestine. And from there, um, uh, in 2019, uh, after I been uh, after I used to facilitate the Freedom Theatre School, um, I had to move to Ireland for uh, many different issues. But it's uh, the most important part that now I'm in Ireland, uh, where I started my journey in a Sligo uh, in a Massey meeting, where I just to stand, you know, going there to um, listen about the experience of other asylum seekers and what direct provision uh, means in Ireland. Um, and then uh, I found myself standing with a group of people outside and we just did a bit of project where we just wanted to document uh, a project about our experience as artists living in direct provision center and our relationship with that bit that it drags us every day to it more and more. And what, what the things that we have to do uh, to resist this bid and what the resistance comes there. And also it was really important um, to go with, uh, with a group on just talking about their personal stories and how to start from the personal story there and explain um, that, yes, we are asylum seekers, but in the same time we are artists and we have uh, stories to share. And then uh, I time moved on with a bit of project for 10 months working and collecting and writing stories. And in the pandemic, when the pandemic started, uh, we did a 30 minute piece uh, uh, with uh, Garja Art Festival and the Hux Wall Theater where they uh, gave us a space. And we filmed this 30 minute piece uh, that went uh, to the Department of Justice and also were funded from the Art Council. Um, I would say like, you know, being working in, in Palestine and working here in Ireland as a collaborative artist uh, always showed me the real way of uh, doing art is being a human first and look at my human needs uh, before, at, before looking at my artistical needs. And also what it means to be away from your home and to be part of a new culture and to be part of the new culture, the struggles in that culture, because moving in from Palestine, I'm not moving myself only, I'm moving also my own struggle to another place. And my struggle will be included to this place where um, I had to keep myself there. Um, yeah, and to, after uh, the bid project uh, happened and we, when we presented it, uh, I received my Minister of Justice letter uh, as a, I received my refugee declaration here in Ireland. And after that, um, I in 2020, in October also, I received uh, the Brossary Award from a create of the AHC Brossary Award Art and Collaborative uh, Arts and Community Scheme. And the project was about one uh, letter from the Arabic alphabets, which is the third letter of the Arabic alphabets where it comes in my name to feminize my name. And this letter comes to uh, the Tamar Buta, comes to, uh, to uh, feminize the adjectives and the nouns. And I took this letter in uh, research for the last six months where um, I found this letter comes also in the word immigration, comes in the word of justice, al-Nakba, comes in resistance. And through that also, uh, I could make um, a 15 minutes uh, documentary piece where uh, I'm planning to 
uh, apply for another for uh, for another fund for it and to work it uh, with the community. And the documentary is talking about my experience in direct provision and how also my experience in direct provision is different because um, I I live in a place it doesn't look like a direct provision it looks like uh, uh, like BNB and also I had an, like my journey in Ireland was totally crazy and good and bad in the same time um, and from there now also um, I'm, I applied for the Art Council for a new project that uh, for a theater project that came as a development uh, of that Marbuta project and I'm just going on with those things and I'm really thankful for Create for giving me this opportunity to explore my work and to explore my vision and ideas and what I believe in in art that what I believe in right now is being an artist it's really important but also looking at uh, the present time while living in Ireland is I still miss one thing it's you know just to create this uh, context with the Irish uh, that just you know the um, you know to calculate to the context in the Irish language how um, to use the language and to be part of the language and I'm gonna join a school to study or a college where I'm going to look into studies to be part of uh, the Irish community more and more and to know how to use, to be part of the language as itself. Yeah. You mean uh, Irish? Irish? No, not Irish language as itself, but you know, here in Ireland, like, because I come from a different minority, like, I'm not used uh, to the artistical language that the Irish artists are using, or I'm not used to... Um, you know, the way how Irish people communicate. Uh, and, you know, thank for, thanks for Corona giving me the chance being for one year, not having this create, having the connection to the Irish society. And coming back also to the idea when I said, yeah, I'm an Irish artist because I'm part of the Irish society now and I have the Irish residency and I'm proud of that. And I'm, I'm happy to be an Irish. And also to be honest, Ireland, it's similar to Palestine in, in different ways, uh, especially with the government here. Yeah. I don't know if we have to go deep into that conversation. <laughs> no, I don't think so, because that's gonna lead into different diagonals. <laughs> uh, thank you, Amir, thank you very much. So as far as uh, your both presentations are making us understand that the Irish cultural context provides you with um, enough opportunities for your realization and development of your, of your art, art. Nonetheless, I would also, uh, it wouldn't be me if I, if I won't bring this conversation to some more critical maybe overview because um, uh, I don't know if it's part of your experience, but as a, as a, as a researcher, I definitely uh, had a conversation with other artists, especially artists of color uh, or artists uh, that uh, are coming from uh, a broader non-Christian, let's say, uh, heritage, uh, who have experienced different sorts of racist attitudes towards them mm -hmm. uh, in their navigation through the Irish context not exclusively cultural. Uh, was it part of your experience? Of course, you both, and I would be very clear here, I may be imposing my own political view, but I do think that three of us have been subjects of racialization through uh, direct provision system, no matter uh, how uh, it looks like, BNB &B or not, it's still an institutionalized living. You know, we are still under camera surveillance and control being particularly uh, perfectly uh, adults and able uh, to sort for ourselves. We uh, have been uh, experimenting a sort of institutionalization, infantilization. Uh, so uh, it, it shouldn't be uh, confusing that the conditions in direct provision uh, is not an issue as such. The direct provision is an issue. The very idea that people, the distrust that is put over uh, uh, people 
uh, in need of international protection. So uh, at least I would like to kind of point out that this would be my uh, perception of the system that I am uh, experienced too. But uh, what I would like to ask you is, did you, did you, uh, in your in your art, in your uh, in your navigation through the arts in Ireland, have you met a racist attitude? Have you met a sort of situations when you felt um, that you have been kind of, you know, maybe not directly discriminated against, but in a very sometimes subtle way, because ra racism can express itself in a very subtle way. Uh, have you experienced this sort of elimin uh, um, alienation? Maybe, uh, uh, Hina, you can uh, start again. Yeah, actually, this is very different. Uh, like, uh, I, I live with the people, but I'm, a, I think, different kind of person. I didn't uh, face any kind of racism. Uh, but, uh, like, uh, one of my friends, uh, like, uh, she don't know and she talk about, like, Black people. This is the word just she, she said, and it is a very strong reaction because some people are living behind her. So I was just witness that, like, it was not, a mistake but it is a cultural difference and uh, like uh, she was annoyed by the word and she this doesn't mean about the, the she like uh, I know the lady uh, like uh, but it is a very big curial between them about these things but I, I didn't face any kind of racism over there in, in the system a lot of uh, like African friends I have and a lot of people like uh, they are really, really helping because my husband was sick and I was in a really, really difficult condition at that time, you know, mentally and uh, physically and emotionally as well. So like, but I, I find the, all the people very cooperative and uh, like, I didn't find any kind of issue, this kind of issue by myself. This is very good, Hina. It's very good. No, I'm, I'm really happy that... Uh... Uh, there are also different scenarios and it's not all black and white and that's why we need these conversations because you know no but, and uh, even like irish friends they are uh, i joined the etb and there is a lot of old friends uh, like uh, they are all irish but uh, they are all irish friends and they guide me like in a mother way they guide me like hina your art is so good so you can go here you apply there you do that. I don't know even like where I need to apply and where I have to go. I just started a course from ETB. So that is the way like Irish people help me in that way. So I really appreciated that thing as well. This is very good. This is very good. Thanks. to. I think I, I'm very lucky to met with some people like they are really, really uh, like uh, they push me even Arts Council officer of County Mayo. The County Mayo, I have mm. uh, several friends over there. Even uh, myself, I don't didn't find like my art is fit in with the Irish art scene. I have this guilty and I have this cultural differences thing in my mind. But when the curator like Catherine Marshall and Patrick Murphy, they selected my pieces with the Irish art scene. So I feel like a bit of confidence about my work. These kind of things are happen with me. Like I, I, I feel myself very lucky in that way. This is great. Thank you, Hina. What about you, Amin? Well, what about, yeah, of course I face racism. We all face racism. I'm not talking about racism in the art scene because, see, coming from Palestine to Ireland also, um, you know, it's moved this side away of the idea of racism because there's a great and wonderful understanding uh, from the Irish society to the Palestinian society. And, uh, you know, I always introduced myself as a Palestinian and I always were respected about that. But the racism I faced, oh, of course, you know, I have a brown hair and I have a brown eyes in the government. When you go to the government, you are the foreign there. And I just wanted to talk about something that's gonna explain what the racism I faced exactly. A few days ago, uh, I had, to, you know, I'm applying for my social welfare now because I'm coming out of DB. And, you know, I've been trying to communicate with the government myself and, you know, to be kind of mm, nice. I know how now how to talk to them and things, but it didn't work. And for me, that's, yeah. And I had to take my manager with me uh, to entry office in Drahada and suddenly 
the language is totally different. Uh, the way the, how they reacting to the things are totally different. And there I understand that, yes, here is racism comes in this place when it comes, you know, to your, uh, you know, to be here, to be part of here. They doesn't want this. Um, and, but also the, th the second thing, the thing I wanted to talk about racism through my studies, cultural resistance and the idea of resistance. Um, you can allow a person to be racist to you and you can not allow be a person to be racist to you. I felt what I were lucky with here in Ireland, that's a game with the language. And that was a key to be part, a key to, uh, to connect and to be allowed. And yes, I got this opportunity because I looked it into it, the opportunity of being an artist here, and I always fight it for my place as an artist. But it wouldn't come uh, if I didn't fight for it. Nobody will tell you, oh, you have to come and to do your art. And I'm just thinking about other people. Okay, I were lucky to have English and they were lucky to speak the language, but what about others? What they have to do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and yes, this is... Uh... And also, you know, my experience here in direct provision, يعني, I think uh, because I understand the system very fast and, and I understand how the system goes and, you know, I've been able to help others, you know, to put them in the system, to get their BBS number, to get lawyers for them. Also, that's, you know, that's made another face of racism in me in a way or another because I had to be stuck here without no reason. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's it's a difficult difficult situation and difficult stories to to document, but I think it's also well needed, you know, because yeah. this is kind of the problem, no, that we are on one side as um, we we would be more com comfortable not experiencing any racism. But from the other side, we do experience it sometimes. And when we experience it, what do we do with that? Do we take an action? Do we speak out loud? Do we try to resolve the issue? Or we just trying to kind of avoid it, you know, in a sense, trying to navigate <laughs> again through it without confrontation in the non-confrontational way. And this is when we are approaching to one of the maybe more, uh, hardest dilemmas because I think that the dealing with racism is not just an obligation of uh, people of color, of racialized people, but is the obligation of the whole society if we share the understanding and the belief that racism is an evil, and we need to deal with that. Uh, in this sense, I really think that the stand against racism is something that uh, we can do at every day iteration, regardless of our race, regardless of our gender, regardless of our heritage. We all have to be against it, considering that this is probably the worst uh, social disease that exists uh, nowadays. And we know that racism kills and we know that racism uh, does most terrible things to the human, uh, to the humanity and to the human being. Uh, I would also like to touch a little bit uh, on the, uh, your experience within the uh, Irish art sector. You mentioned several awards that you have been granted and some other things. And I know that at least both you, uh, Hina, and uh, you, Amir, uh, uh, mostly, uh, at least the first, they initiated the big, um, the, 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 the first breakthroughs that you got were through the special bursaries that are assigned to uh, culturally diverse artists. Uh, now the question is, have you, ex have you tried to participate uh, in uh, uh, some other uh, calls for awards uh, that are open for uh, everyone, uh, regardless of uh, being migrant or, or not? 
And if yes, how success, what is your success rate? Uh, uh, this is one question. And then the second question would be, maybe we can just answer them uh, in, in complex is, do you think that this migrant special awards for migrant artists are needed or we need to try to kind of uh, mainstream it in a way that we don't have to separate and seg segregate through the special sort of programs and awards. So maybe some reflection on this and we will uh, slightly moving to the end of our conversation. Uh, uh, thanks again, everyone who is watching us. Um, Maybe uh, just to break out a little bit the, the structure, Amir, you can start answering and then we'll proceed with Hina. Yeah, uh, well, I would love to answer that. Um, see, I, I didn't apply, like, I, I applied once for something that's away from, you know, the idea of the headline immigrants and a refugee and asylum seeker. And it didn't work well because, you know, I was in a space trying to understand things. It wasn't ready for that, but... When it comes to the to the question as about it should be going on that specially grants for immigrants or should we go all together? I think it's really important to you know to disconnect immigrants from other projects, not because it's just to make the differences and to make two groups, because first of all the way we work in art as immigrant people it's totally different, and the second thing it just makes it different uh, when you know the way the way that you know an immigrant will apply for it because it will give them all the possibility to introduce what they think that they are able to introduce because when we come into a normal uh, form of a project or into a normal form of work it would be like it would not include all the information that an immigrant should include as an artist uh, like for example if i applied for for example a grant that doesn't like the ac award that's special, special granted for people who live displacement and people who face, you know, the experience of that I am in right now. Uh, I wouldn't be able really to be part of uh, the art scene because it's will not, if I have not for something else, yeah, I will get the grant maybe, but I will not present what I should present. And also it's the, the door, like the door to give me to present my story and to present what I have. And then it's on me if I wanted to change this story or not. It's up to the artists as themselves. You want to stay as an immigrant or you want to be an artist, as a general artist, an Irish, Palestinian, uh, you know, in a world context, uh, artists. Thank you. Thank you, Amir. Uh, the, the, actually, the, the most, uh, I, I saw somewhere recently that the most um, uh, frequent phrase of 2020 is, sorry, you are on mute, which I think... <laughs> 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 I almost started to speak with you with the mic on mute. Hina, yes, please, uh, uh, if you can proceed with me. Yeah, um, for my thinking is uh, like, uh, we are all artists in the first place. Why you are uh, like uh, interviewing me because of, art, because of my art, why people are highlighting my things. But when we categorize, uh, the artist in a, some uh, bar, uh, in boundaries and we categorize like this artist can just go for this thing and not go for the rest of things. This is, I think, uh, I don't feel like it's good. Like it should not be categorized. When you need to search someone because people uh, like this is important for, a, uh, for an artist, but all the time, like if when we apply, we have to uh, like go through with the immigrant kind of things to apply opportunities. It is not, I think it is categorizing the artist and art has uh, like no boundaries. Art is, uh, art has multiple language. The colors are similar in everywhere all over the world and artist voices should be highlighted. And uh, uh, the uh, thing you said to me, like uh, last year I got uh, an Ar uh, Arts Council Ireland award. Like I was not expecting, like I got it. And then uh, some of my Irish friends, they said to me like, Hina, you are very lucky to got it. And we didn't got it yet. Like they are really like they, they study from here. They are working in UK and Ireland. And uh, like they said, like, Hina, you, this is a very prestigious award. You got it. And we didn't got it. 
so like uh, i think i find uh, in like they are uh, they are looking towards the work and the quality of work and uh, like uh, i really feel like uh, we can apply everything in like whatever whatever suits for each and everyone i'm not categorizing myself as an immigrant artist that's why i'm saying i am an artist like i am working just for the sake of art and this covid make me fearless like whatever the uh, like uh, whatever the situation i'm just producing art no matter like uh, covid is everywhere so we can get affected and within days we can go from another journey so like i am thinking categorization for the art scene is i think to uh, to hold the artist in boundaries you know yeah yes oh i'm not on you Good. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're not <laughs> muted now. I thank think you. I, 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 yeah, I'm not here to agree or disagree, but I, uh, at the same time, I think that you know, uh, maybe let's let me rephrase a little bit to add just this very last, and maybe we will finish even with that. But uh, what I was uh, thinking about when you were showing your works and saying, uh, speaking about your work uh, uh, on the sex workers, on the, you know, uh, f feminism, women, uh, there, there is a lot of kind of feminism in, in your art. And feminism is a deeply political thing. You know, it's a political movement. We cannot pretend that this is not. Or uh, Amir, in your biography, in, 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 in your art, as I know it, in the freedom theater, in the very idea that you are claiming to be Palestine, Palestinian, it is also a lot of politics. So even in your, in your art practice, there is a lot of politics involved. And we know that the politics uh, makes kind of art to be, uh, to, to move to this idea of a political statement. No, we cannot avoid every piece of art that you do is a sort of political statement, is a sort of, you know, a politicization of certain topic you are talking mm. about through the arts. And in this case, do you think that the Irish arts context is welcoming the messages, the political messages that you are trying to send. And with your answers, we will finish this conversation. Thank you very much. I want artists to have the last word. And uh, it has been a great pleasure. Uh, well, Hina just disconnected directly. <laughs> Maybe that was her answer. But you won't escape, Amir. So this will be... No, I won't your... escape. I will, I will answer that. I can't be an artist, I can't do an art piece if it doesn't have the political dimension in it, the personal dimension and the societal dimension in it. Then it's not a piece of art. And there's loads of art like that. And being here as a Palestinian, because I'm not looking, to be honest with you, I'm not looking for Irish papers and you know, being an Irish only, I respect Ireland and respect the Irish history. I'm looking for my right as a human being, as a Palestinian, I wanted to go back to my home to be, you know, to get my own nationality and to hold it up and proudly. I am Palestinian. But yes, in Ireland, I think there's a huge welcoming for anything. See, the Irish society is a bit com complicated. Uh, there is uh, there is cold and hot in it. Uh, there is uh, there is white and black. There is uh, there is rainbow and there is no rainbow at all. It's up to the area you are in. It's up to the art field that you work in. Also, it's. That's how I see it. But yeah, there is a huge welcoming for anything I see, um, you know. And also, I don't know, maybe because I'm realistic, that's why I feel I'm welcomed in the art scene. Thank you, Amir. Hina. Thank you. Uh, I just lost the connection, I'm sorry. Uh, can you repeat your question? Well, it was, <laughs> do, you think, do you think the political message that you are sending through your art is welcomed by the Irish art context? Uh, yes, because uh, I, I had a show in Valina Art Center and uh, like, uh, like I am selecting, like 
my upcoming shows are in 2022 2023 so like i'm preparing a show and i discuss with a lot of uh, like uh, uh, the uh, i think top management from the irish different uh, board of directors and people i, I discuss my ideas and they really really appreciate my art and i got uh, like good response from different artists and after even the uh, fire station and create a lot of people said to me we saw your work so like uh, collaboration happened after the summer residency with you with thomas and with the uh, uh, upper maker david bickley so like i feel like uh, it is very welcoming for me yeah thank you very much thank you so answering that it's still i still take the last words which wasn't my intention but anyway thank you very much and i, I wanted just to show that you are changing Ireland with your answers, with your art, with your contribution, with your passion. You are changing this country for good. And this country is changing us and we are changing this country. This is what cultural diversity is about. Thank you very much, Joan. Thank you, Sligo, for uh, having us today. You can uh, make your questions in the, uh, in the chat box. Uh, Thanks again, stay safe, and hope to see you all soon offline. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, bye-bye.